Uh, hey guys, uh, well, I'm Max from the Learning at Home project and from Yandex. Basically, uh, we've discussed several issues uh, which uh, we would like to be solved in the broader uh, context of uh, distributed machine learning in uh, the context of uh, volunteer scenarios. We treated, uh, well, uh, can you see the notes, uh, right? Uh, oh, they, they are available. I'll they should be it. available. Yes, yeah. so, but, but I have to share the link just to make it easy for people. Yeah. So here so, are the, is the link to the notes we took dur during our session. Yeah, so basically uh, we uh, tackled four issues during our conversation. The first of them was the issue of trust and uh, safety of the data, because uh, for instance, there might be some uh, cases when people would, uh, would, would not really like to send their data uh, for training on the volunteer resources. For instance, imagine that uh, it's uh, certain kinds of sensitive data, for example, uh, medical records and so on. Uh, we've discussed that, well, first of all, it can be a non-issue because, uh, well, there, there are some workloads which still may benefit from this entire volunteer scenario, but still, uh, if there is an issue of uh, uh, privacy, in our data, uh, there can be some ways of implementing that. First of all, we can make some peers more or less trusted in the sense that uh, if uh, you want uh, one peer not to interfere in your training, then uh, you can uh, assign to him some value of trust. And if uh, that guy uh, ma manages to uphold his reputation for uh, quite some time, then uh, you don't need to verify his results, for instance. And for other guys, for the guys which are joining this uh, collaborative training procedure, then uh, you can verify them more frequently. As the training uh, proceeds, they are verified uh, less and less frequently. Uh, then we had this issue of validation for stochastic jobs, which uh, is always an issue for uh, training uh, something like deep neural networks because the weight space is uh, several hundreds of millions or billions of uh, parameters large. And you can uh, arrive at different uh, lo local minima, for instance, if you don't uh, take care of uh, like correct initialization. Uh, this is, uh, well, and uh, there are some issues which are related to the stochasticity of uh, the GPUs basically because uh, their computational results are not entirely deterministic in case of uh, using CUDA for GPU training. Uh, also, we discussed the issue of uh, data privacy. Well, uh, the, the one I named first, basically. Uh, so some people might not want to share the, uh, their data for their experiments. And there are two ways to tackle this. First of them is to use uh, some uh, known federated learning procedures uh, in some uh, libraries, for instance, uh, the two which are linked here, the PySift and uh, the Palisade. Uh, so we, we have this area of federated learning, which uh, tries to tackle and uh, solve this issue of privacy. Uh, so that is one way to solve it. Uh, the other one is actually not to send this uh, private data to the volunteers at all. So basically what you can do is to obfuscate this uh, trained data somehow uh, via augmentations uh, of your training data, we are passing it through some uh, neural layers uh, and uh, something else. Uh, also, we had uh, the issue of data transfer uh, because uh, any uh, machine learning workload uh, in the context of neural networks is quite bandwidth heavy. And uh, if you are sending all of your computation results on one server, it, not might, it might not be able to handle the load. Uh, efficiently, at least. So what you, you, what you can do is uh, to use some uh, uh, approaches, which I linked here, the bad PS uh, paper uh, specifically by, by Dan's. And what they do is they take this uh, existing paradigm of the parameter server and they expand it uh, to support several uh, nodes, which uh, can accept the incoming connections and to aggregate the results the weights of your neural network between each other. So yeah, and the last uh, discussion we had was about uh, useful brain features. I remember two of them, uh, <laughs> well, the, because they are on the list. Uh, the first is the uh, ability to 
have dynamic changes in uh, our configuration because uh, we can have something like of an elastic workload or like uh, what was the word uh, Ashwini you uh, yeah and she, she's unmuted unfortunately uh, so I have to uh, uh, recall it myself uh, it's something like uh, well uh, elastic workloads which uh, uh, it's uh, uh, auto scaling yeah uh, for the Kubernetes clusters and so on uh, so it would be really good if we had uh, this ability to support this uh, feature. And the other one is uh, variable runtime support because sometimes the training of your you node, know, the workload is stochastic and you uh, can't actually be sure that your workload is definite in terms of the computation units. And you need to be able to, uh, it, it's hard to estimate even in some cases. And you need to be able to like, uh, control for this factor of variability and to be able to schedule these jobs without uh, any issues. That's all basically, if uh, I missed something, put it on the chat. Ashwini, any, uh, or John? Yeah. It was auto scaling, perfect. Okay. Um, John, any, any further, is that a thumbs up? <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you, Max.